Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. With Spider-Man Far From Home just around the corner, major plot leaks in regards to the movie have started coming out, so I thought I'd break down one of the big ones that we have on the film that goes into major depth on many of the scenes in the movie and its ending. This one differs slightly from an earlier released one which predominantly was just made up of a handful of bullet points, so it seems far more legitimate and trustworthy. This is full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to have anything about the movie potentially ruined for yourself, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. This is an internet leak, so do take it with a grain of salt as it may not be accurate, but as we saw with my Avengers Endgame and Game of Thrones leaks, both were pretty much 100% accurate, so I don't want to spoil the movie for anyone who doesn't want to know, so this is your last, last, last chance to back out. Are you still here? Good. Well with that out the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video, I hope you enjoy it, and now sit back, relax, and let's get into my leak plot breakdown of Spider-Man Far From Home. Okay, so the movie opens immediately after Avengers Endgame, with Peter, Aunt May, and Happy Hogan flying home on a private jet after just attending Tony Stark's funeral. Everyone is pretty bummed out about it, with Peter crying, but Happy states that Tony sacrificed himself because he knew there were other people that could continue the fight, and he states that the character thought highly of Peter, and that if he wanted anyone to be his successor, that it would have been him. I actually wrote the script for this on the 24th of May at 8am, as you can see in the bottom corner of the video here, which is way before the trailer drop that actually confirmed this, so again, it kind of backs up that this leak is right. Anyway, they land and go their separate ways, and Aunt May reminds Peter that they have a charity gala that night, and she kind of reiterates what Happy said about Peter taking over Tony's position as a protector, and that he trusted Peter to be there for the people that he couldn't. She then jokingly says, you don't need to be Iron Man, but you do need to be Spider-Man tonight, which ties into the nighttime event. Honestly, at this point, this all seems really believable, and from the backup of the trailer, it seems the kind of tone that they would be taking, with the private jet scene only really being able to take place here. It's at this point that Peter realises there's a thing between Aunt May and Happy, and as we saw in the trailer, he's ghosting Nick Fury, and the character goes out on his nightly patrols. After telling the police that he's going on vacation, he goes to see the Iron Man monument, and decides that he's not really cut out for this life, which is similar to the Spider-Man arc that we saw in the comics when Peter left his costume in a dumpster. Whilst this already happened in Spider-Man 2, and Marvel probably don't want to just repeat that scene, Peter decides to go on holiday and leaves his Spider-Man suit behind, which both literally and figuratively shows that he doesn't want to continue with the mantle. Aunt May, however, does still pack it. We then cut to some Eastern European shady looking characters who say that their time has come and that the spider will finally meet its end. This kind of ties into the whole multiverse thing, and as these aren't villains that we've seen Spider-Man encounter before in this universe, you can bet that they'll be from some other earth where he followed their plans. They're kind of cloaked in darkness, but it plays into the movie later, which I'll get into. From here we cut to the first day in Venice, and it's clear that MJ and Peter are getting pretty close. Ned also remarks that their flight was one of the first out, as the world is finally getting back on track, and that he can't believe one of his friends from high school is a model now and in college. This kind of pays lip service to many of the questions that people had at the end of Endgame, with pretty much most of the class being vanished except a select few. Anyway, they watch a news report and see Mysterio fighting a monster over Tower Bridge in London. They remark that he must be a new Avenger as they've never seen him before, and we get a full screen scene of Mysterio fighting the beast. Cut to Peter going back to his room, which is when Nick Fury shoots Ned in the neck and tries to recruit Peter. Peter tries to come up with excuses, with the last one being, I don't have a suit, to which Fury replies, now you're definitely all out of excuses. Nick takes him to his secret shield base, which is where he meets Mysterio and Maria Hill for the first time, and we learn that the former is apparently from another dimension. Maria tries explaining it, but Peter butts in, saying that he knows all about string theory, the multiverse, and more, which is a nice little character beat. Mysterio and Peter team up and go to Germany to fight the next elemental, and Peter realises that Mysterio is way, way, way more powerful than he is, and he ends up pretty much having to play defensive for the majority of the fight as he gets his butt kicked. For some reason, Peter just can't seem to fight the monsters, whereas Mysterio is landing hit after hit, and ultimately ends up saving the day. Together the two go to the bar that we've seen from the trailers, and Peter, who's really lost all of his confidence at this point, asks how Mysterio can do it and he can't. 
Mysterio replies because he's from another dimension and he knows all of the tricks and has more control. From here on out Mysterio sort of becomes a mentor to Peter at this point and he explains that if he doesn't want the responsibility of being a hero then he shouldn't be one. There are other people that can do it now and this further adds doubt into Peter's mind. Mysterio backs this up by saying because he has loved ones, Peter will always be at risk of hurting them and that he should leave it to people like himself who don't have anything to lose. Just as this happens, the lava monster attacks a theme park where MJ, Ned and the rest of the gang are at. MJ almost dies and it's at this point that Peter realises something is up here because his web pulls a metal panel off the elemental and he sees circuitry beneath it. Peter wants to get to the bottom of it so he uses the black stealth suit and the red and blue one which Aunt May packed to make a brand new black and red suit and with the circuitry he got from the elemental he figures out a way to stop them. Just as this is happening MJ comes in and asks if he wants to go for a walk. Peter tries to tell her how he feels but MJ stops him and tells him that she knows he's Spider-Man. Peter says that he doesn't want to be any longer but there's something that he has to do which MJ replies, sure there is, you're Spider-Man, go get him Tiger. Peter tries to track down Mysterio which is when Peter's spider sense goes wild. He turns around to see Nick Fury and he tries to tell him that something's up with Mysterio. However, Fury just stands there silent and his face begins to change which is when we see that he's actually the villain Chameleon which ties back to the Eastern European scene. Chameleon has been rumoured to be in this film for a while so it definitely ties in with other leaks that we've heard. He's one of my favourite Spider-Man villains and I absolutely love the classic arc where he disguises himself as J. Jonah Jameson so it's great to see that the villain could be included in the MCU. He tells Peter that he'll pay for what he's done to his family and then the Vulture, Mysterio and Scorpion step forward and begin kicking the crap out of him. Peter realises though that these are probably illusions and he uses the circuitry from the elementals to change them into Captain America and Iron Man. With their new AI they begin fighting back against Mysterio and Chameleon and they just completely wail on them. I'm not sure how accurate this is as I don't know how soon that Marvel would be willing to bring the characters back after they both just departed the series but I guess we'll see. Peter gives Tony a really heartfelt goodbye and the AI says that he's proud of him and all that he's accomplished. From here Peter frees the real Nick Fury and returns to New York. He takes the illusion equipment that gave him the Tony Stark message and stares at it for a bit, deciding to smash it as he's no longer bound to living a fantasy world and he's willing to accept that he must become a hero. We then cut to the credits and we see the Avenger Tower which has been renovated to become Oscorp Tower. This has been pretty widely reported on in all of the leaks so I definitely think it will happen and it's a smart way to bring the Osborns into the universe as they've been missed out. And that's the entire leak. To me it makes a hell of a lot of sense going off the trailers and things like the black being combined with the red and blue suit to make a new one seems legit so I can really see this all happening. It's a heavily detailed leak and I can see it being legitimate and if this is the case then it sounds like it's going to be a brilliant movie. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the plot leak and whether you think it's legitimate or not. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please like it and make sure you check out my ending explained breakdown of Brightburn which will be linked at the end. We've also just launched a merch section on the channel so if you want to support the show and get something back from it make sure you click the links in the boxes below. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes so if that's the kind of thing you like hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.